Right. And he's going to be the next gold in the coming times. Mm -hmm. Anybody without land, because now America has one million homeless people. Right. You bet in 20, 30 years, they're going to be triple the number. Right. And most of them, 90% are going to be African Americans. Or blacks, yeah. If you see a poor man in Africa, according to the statistics of the World Bank and IMF, this poor man, they say, he he is poor because he cannot be able to spend a dollar a day. Mm -hmm. But this poor man is in my village. Mm -hmm. He has, at least he has his 10 acres of land. Mm -hmm. He has his vegetables. Mm -hmm. He has his banana plantation. Mm -hmm. The kids go to the public school. Mm -hmm. He has his home. Mm -hmm. Why, what else does a human being need? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the poor man in the U.S. is homeless. What's going on about this Afro think tank? Today, I want to do a reaction and give my input on the King Gonda show they did the other day. It was African Americans should be given free land in Africa. And first I want to say, yet again, shout out to King Gonda's channel. Uh, shout out to all the guests on King Gonda's channel. I swear, every time he... He's putting these these people on the channel and exposing that there's a lot of very intelligent uh, intellectuals on the continent that's that's about that life, and I really uh, appreciate uh, how he's putting these people in the forefront. Because the thing is, like he said on the show, you know, African Americans ain't the only ones who can swing the bat. There's a lot of Af continental Africans who can swing that bat, and sometimes you just need to give them the bat so you can so they can show the world they can swing that shit, right? So. My take on African Americans should be given free land in Africa. Uh, my short answer is yes, we should. I think African Americans, African Caribbeans, the descendant of those taken into the transatlantic slave trade should bare minimum at least be given free land in Africa, right? Because I'm pretty sure more than likely they had their answer, they had land before they were snatched away from it and brought here, right? So at bare minimum, yes, we should be given free land. But at the same time, those countries who will be given free land to African Americans, they need to make make it. It has to be fair. So it can't just be willy nilly. Hey, let's just give a bunch of African Americans free land without any type of conditions. Because here's the thing: there are people in those countries that could be that could use that land too, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, there are people in that country. You know, so giving African Americans free land because we've been historically disenfranchised and abused. It's one thing, but neglecting the local population and their needs and the fact that they've been abused as well, you know, should be taken in consideration. So the way I see it, there's got to be ways to do it. So I feel like if African-Americans or any diasporas that was brought over here due to transatlantic slave trade be given free, free land, it should be under certain conditions, right? So let's say you should have maybe different programs. Maybe if you want to, if this is a relocate relocation type of situation where people are moving it has to be net plus a net assets for the community act uh, a net asset for the community in which they're moving to depending on what country they're going to right so if you're a black american and you have the money because thing is, even if they give you free land you're still gonna have to have money to, to do anything right and you got to, and i think that before you are given free land you have to do something with it. you got to make some sort of promise some sort of contractual agreement that you would develop this land either domestically uh, or commercially for either a business or for land depending on for for housing depending on where you know where you're you know located what kind of program you're using and obviously all the work should be it should benefit the community meaning the local people should be hired to do the work to do the jobs local people should benefit for you should, when you create the jobs to either build the structure or you have a business obviously you should be hiring local so you should have a deal when I say local, I mean literally whatever the town or village you should be hiring from within that town, within that village, right? And I'm pretty sure, through my experience, that an average, an average African American who's a middle class could go over there and effectively start and run a business, right? If all they have to do is put the same effort they do when they go to their regular corporate jobs and work and bust their ass working eight hour weeks for the white man, so he, so the white man could be in the Maldives having a good time and shit, right? You put that same effort into actually just, you know, focusing on your business and focusing on your employees, whether you have a one or two or or 50. Right. So I think we should do things like that. I also think that the money that will be coming from such things like that should also subsidize the local community. Maybe maybe something like uh, the, a certain amount of investment money goes towards the school so that 
kids don't have to pay school fees or something like that or or, or, or something to improve improve the um the quality of life in the in the village or in the towns wherever you move anything that you have it has to be a net positive right you don't want to put burden on top of burden you know how we black people in america complain how the white people when they when they bring over the refugees or whatever they just dump them in black neighborhoods and they give them loans and they start businesses and we don't benefit and we always complain about that right so we don't want to be that very same guy group of people coming in to somebody else's community yeah we're black yeah we understand that well but at the same time it's about that money e economics right however you put it we're coming from america with leverage we don't want to be going to people's communities even if we're bringing bringing like um convenience we don't want to be sucking the money out of the community right and sending it and and and, and sending it back to her doing whatever we're doing with it and and disenfranchising or taking the money away from the people who need that money to circulate within the community so we have to have somewhat of a uh, a built-in mechanism that way no matter how much money we make whether it be a you know some sort of local tax or something something that just takes a little bit of what we got going on and benefits the community right so i think that if done that way i think that uh that would be conducive I, I, yeah i think that i think that'll work because we don't want them to be we don't want the, the you know the local we don't want their welcome because they're gonna welcome they're gonna welcome anything we do but at the same time at some point just like if you look at ghana right the people gonna be like all right now you know this stuff starting to look nice but now it's getting expensive right same things happening in mexico all the white people going down to mexico because they're trying to escape america and how much it costs right so now in mexico city the local people are complaining that all these remote workers all these digital nomads that's working their good american corporate jobs while taking all the apartments Raise, you know taking all the apartments and raising the price of everything we can't go there and then start to raise the price of everything because of the things that we want so we're gonna have to not be greedy right we're gonna have to we're gonna have to meld within the community and take our skills take our you know take the things that we know and integrate it somehow within the system so we're not disenfranch the main thing my my main thing is not to disenfranchise the local community let's not make it a place that's that that's not the the what i want to say okay let's not make it a place that that's that not make it america you know what i'm saying like it's very low cost of living in 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 africa very low cost of living right and we want to keep it that way we don't want to rate we don't want to raise the cost of living we want to keep it low right because like uh one of the, the very intelligent um guests on king ganda show said and I've been saying, like y'all heard me say this in many of my videos, being poor in Africa and being poor in America is two different things, right? Being a poor person in, in Africa, right? Somebody who ain't making, you know, maybe two, three, they might, may not even be making two, three hundred dollars a month. But guess what they do have? They got tons of land. They grow almost all their food on their land, right? They got a house they don't pay no mortgage for, right? So they have a place to live. Usually it's a big ass house. Sometimes it's a big ass house, right? With a big ass fence. They got acres and acres of land. They just farm. They eat good. You know, they go to the market because the, the food is relatively cheap compared to living and easy to get and fresh. It's still organic. The seeds actually still grow. Like, poor people, you know, what we can perceive as poor, right? Some people actually spend thousands of, month, thousands of dollars a month to go experience for seven days, right? But they live that life every day, and we call them poor. But in America, if you poor, you homeless, you're on the street. And we got winter. So that means you're on the street in winter. In Washington DC, I see poor people every everywhere every day. White poor people on the street, right? <laughs> White people, black people, but I see everybody on the street, poor, broke, right? They got nothing. People die here when they're homeless. They have nowhere to live, literally. They actually on the street. And America doesn't have enough compassion to take care of their homeless. Not many countries do really have the compassion to take or the environment or the infrastructure to really take care of, you know, homeless people. But Africa, we could create an infrastructure to even, to even take care. We can do that. It's so much land. It's ridiculous. Like, huh, it's so much land available to be purchased at a, a relatively low price, right? We can do things. We can build uh, communities. Now, maybe I think that the gentleman had a great idea where, you know, get with the local government and see if they'll be okay with you. Maybe a corporation or organization uh, making some sort of pilot program to where you would bring disenfranchised low um 
lower end, like African Americans who are like maybe struggling here, right? And ha just have a program to relocate them and maybe see if they can be more productive in the place where they can at least leverage some of the skills that they got, you know, and see if they can make something happen for them over there. As long as the program at the end of the program has an economic model that will be a net benefit, meaning if you can take somebody who is really struggling over here, but it, they, but you know they'll probably, if they had the capability of starting at least a small business, something that's to sustain them, so they can live somewhat of a you know a good life, you can you can employ them under your corporation or whatever that you make there or here, partner with your people over there, and you can get them work visas so they can be officially employees over there, and they, even if they're employees just for the sake of the experiment itself, you know there's all sorts of creative ways you can do this, and I know the government will be about it. Because it'll be good. It'll be a good look for any government governor or or, or state legislator or, or mayor to have a program with African Americans coming to their state to participate in a program where they would live and integrate themselves with the local community. They have appreciation for culture, learning their roots. I mean, this would be a win-win for everybody. And I'm I, like, even I know I'm pretty sure that if I had some money, I already got the people. I can go right now. I got like three kings I can go talk to right now. Right, that already let me know whenever I want to buy some land, come to them. Right, whenever I want to do something, come to them. I, the the people in the kitty, uh, the people in Kitty State, Nigeria, that I associate with, they've already put me on notice that whenever, and not just the Kitty State, um, Eli Oregon to another state, I got a king out there, big king, all right, first class king. He already let me know whenever I want to, or if I have any African American that's serious, they got some money, they got some business. They have the they have the the land. They are they are ready to they ready to work because they want people to bring development and infrastructure and business to the community. So if I'm if I'm if I, if I come to them, I say, well, I got this group and we got this amount of money and this is what we would like to do. I can sit down with kings with the mayors. I have access, right? Because once you start making, and that's the great thing about Nigeria. Well, probably Africa all, all around. It's a communal thing. So you can have access to these people in high places as long as you're nice and you have a good personality and people like you. You know, your personality goes a long way there. Like, you know, your word means something over there. So once you create an established relationship, man, you can get in the ring, room with these people. And if you're serious, man, you can really make it happen. Like we can really do anything we want. We have to get our, get our minds out of the realm of, oh, we have to wait for white people to tell us how to do it. We have to wait for white people to give us the the rules and regulations on how to do it anywhere in the world. We got to get out of that mindset. We don't need them to do anything. We don't need them for nothing. We can just do it ourselves. We are the masters of our own universe. So we can be creative and create our own inst rules, our own structures, and, and negotiate with our brothers and sisters over there to make something that benefit both groups. It's definitely possible. And I'm sure there's people that already got programs or similar, trying to do similar things already. We just need to pick their brains, see who's doing it, pick their brains and, and take the best parts and the worst parts so we don't make the mistakes of the past because you know communities have been created in various other places and they failed for various different reasons we have to find out why do they fail you know maybe do we need it what what can we do to make them not fail what can we make it what can we do to make it not, so it's not like you know just another uh commune that that rose and fell because of egos because of money because of lies and deceit deception it needs to be a smooth, flowing, uh, ever-breathing, ever-evolving um, uh, program that can fluctuate, you know, depending on what the situation is, you know, because things change every day. You know, something happens, right? We, it needs to be fluid and transparent. That's a big thing. The transparency is important because trust is important, but who can we trust, right? So verification will help people and transparency will help people establish trust because we got to start trusting each other. They spent 500 years making sure that black people don't trust the next black person. So it's going to take, I know it's going to take a little bit of time to reestablish the trust that, that we don't have for pretty much anybody, right? But it's something that we have the capability of doing. You know what I'm saying? Because listen, we don't trust them folks, but guess what we do? We work with them folks every day. We know how to navigate and move around them folks every day. So if we can navigate and move around people we know we can't trust, then we can try to establish some sort of trust with each other. All right, you know what I'm saying? We can figure it out. We're, I think we're smart enough. But anyway, that's my take on it. Yes, we should be giving land, but it, everybody should benefit. The local population of the people are surrounding the lands that was given to us. There should be conditions, right? You know, no, no buying land, stagnant, just sitting there to be looking pretty. No, it needs to be developed. It needs to benefit everybody. So that's my take on it. That's all I got to say. It's Afro Think Tank. Learn some teasing. I'm out.